What's up, this is Jake with Hike734, and one of the most common questions I get is about planning extended trips, specifically four to five day trips. And so I'm gonna go ahead and, and do a three part series. The first two I have planned out, and the third one will probably kind of evolve based upon feedback that I get. So um, the, the first thing is, I, I love getting questions about planning trips, but, I, but if you wanna get a response from me, it's probably better if you have a couple suggestions like, hey, I was thinking about doing this and this, what are your thoughts, as opposed to what, do you, what should I do? Because that takes me a little bit more time and then I kind of put it down the line and so I never get back with you. So hopefully this will help you kind of get started. Um, so this first part is basically just how to kind of plan it initially and then, then I'll talk more about it in the ensuing ones more specifically on routes. The first part is, if you haven't been to the park's backcountry site, you really should, and that's the best place to start. And the way to go there is to go to the park's uh, website, which I'll go ahead and have in my links, and then you wanna go to plan your visit, and then from here, you want to go to things to do, and then outdoor activities, and then finally, backcountry camping. You need to start here. Before you email me, go ahead and check out this page. It's got a lot of really great information. It has um, trail status reports, which you really wanna check out because who knows what the trail is gonna be like when you get there. Um, advanced reservation availability, and this is for advanced reservation permits that you'll be paying $30 when you apply. If you, It only gets charged if you actually get it. Um, trail and area closures is so important because when you get to the park, you need to know whether or not your, your permit that you got, if you did an advanced reservation permit, is gonna even be available. And that brings me to one of my little tidbits is always have backup plans. You need to have probably two or three backup trips that are kind of in your back pocket because you don't know whether or not one of them is or is not gonna get turned out. Um, then also the walk-in availability. Um, I keep an eye on this. This is actually how I get a, most of my trips is I keep an eye on this as I'm getting closer to a trip. And then you can go ahead and get your advanced reserve or you can get your permit the day before your trip. So if your trip's gonna start on a Friday, be in there early on Thursday to go ahead and get your, your permit if you can. Um, and then, and then finally, um, there's a couple of others here that aren't as important, but you know, if you can watch the backcountry camping videos beforehand online and then let them know that you have done that, that's great. But at the very top of it, um, there's in step one, it's read the backcountry camping guide. That is step one, read that guide. It is really good. It's not as dry as you would think it would be, um, but it's a PDF that you can go ahead and download and review beforehand. Um, the really important part of that is this backcountry campground information and route planning map. Um, and then it talks about the campground codes and it, it has like distances between the campsites. Super valuable. I would recommend checking that guy out. Um, it is designed for this purpose. Um, the other thing is, and this is a shameless plug, but um, I came out with a day hikes guide this year. And you'd think, well, I'm, I'm doing an extended trip, but I, I worked a lot on the topo map. And I think that you'll find it um, really valuable for um, planning your, your trip. Um, one of the things is that I have, I have outlined, um, in, it's right over here, and that is the glacier regions. Um, for those of you not familiar with the park um, or glacier park, we have it kind of divided into regions. We have the west side, which is the North Fork, Lake McDonald, and Walton, and that's the west side of the Continental Divide. Tends to be more treed um, and tends to be more secluded. Takes a little bit to get to the epic views. Um, and then, then there's the east side of the divide, starting with Goat Haunt, Belly River, and all the way down to Two Medicine. So, um, so it's got that, and then, and then it has my topo map that I went ahead and put together. And I have the distances between like campgrounds. And um, the, the one thing that would really be helpful um, in planning your trip is I have these, um, I've calculated, I broke the trails up into slope, or broke the trails up into segments and calculated the slope. So it'll give you an idea of how much elevation change you're going to experience um, to what degree. So if you look at this, you know, it's pretty steep getting up to Ahern Pass because it's red. So it's greater than a 15 degree slope there. Um, green means it's pretty level, like zero to five degrees. And then yellow means that it does go up and downhill between five and 15 degrees. But it'll give you an idea like, well, this day is gonna be a pretty level day or, or this day is gonna be a lot of elevation change. So there's a lot of really great things in there. So if you don't have it, I, I definitely recommend picking it up. Um, having a good topo map is, is really helpful as, as you're going through these. Um, 
another thing is the good backpacking really doesn't start honestly until later July. Um, if you're not familiar with Glacier, what happens is we get a lot of snowfall and it takes a while to melt out. And so the really good backpacking involves going over passes. And if you come here too early, it's they're all gonna be covered in snow still and they, and they can be quite dangerous. So um, May backpacking is really non-existent. I mean, it, day hiking is a lot of times you'll be going on trail and then snow and then trail and snow and that sort of a thing. Um, June, it starts to melt out in the lower country pretty well, but um, even then your backpacking will be limited to going into drainages and then doing day hikes as far as you can. Um, if you're planning on doing a lot of extended stuff, you better have really good experience um, with crampons and ice axe using and that kind of stuff. Almost all the campsites are still going to be in winter camping mode. Um, and then really July starts to melt out. You know, the, going to the Sun Road is usually plowed by then. And so you can get up into those higher elevations. Um, but you know, really August and September, particularly September for me is one of my favorite times to backpack. Um, but like, you know, always check the trail status page um, at, when you're, when you're going to go out onto the trail, talk to rangers, find out what it's going to be like, because you don't want to all of a sudden find out that, you know, your, back, your, your trip is going to go ahead and get canceled, even if you're day hiking. Um, the other thing that's really tricky, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more, I'm actually going to do a separate blog just about shuttling and, and, and getting transportation around the park. But shuttles can be really difficult, and so um, I'm, I'll talk more specifically about that. But, but sometimes it's better just to do a, an out and back trip for something, especially if you're coming from out of town, just because it's just complicated, particularly in areas like the North Fork of the park. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'll talk more about specifics, but you know, to kind of highlight, um, what my favorite areas are of the park. Um, the High Line is just wonderful. And that is starting kind of up over um, in Logan Pass. And that just follows the um, Continental Divide until it crosses it and then jumps down into the, um, the Goat Haunt area. I love that area. Another area that I really love to backpack in is um, in this Belly River drainage um, and then all the way um, up into Mokawanis. And um, if you look in here, you can see there's a lot of... Um, blue names in here um, and that's just because you have a bunch of waterfalls you have uh, Mokawanis Cascade um, at Cena Falls Peyota Falls Raven Quiver Falls the 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 the, the very headwaters of the Mokawanis River drainage are fantastic. There's just a lot of really amazing um, waterfalls and that kind of thing in that area. So I really love that. Um, and some other areas that I really love, I just love the Two Medicine area down here in the, um, the southeast corner of the park. There's just, it's, it's a drier area. So you spend a lot of time just with epic alpine views. And so Dawson Pitamakan is one of my favorite date hikes. Um, and so you can incorporate that and I'll talk more about that. Um, and then in the Cup Inc. area, same thing, just really great views. Um, there, there's some really great lakes like Morning Star Lake in there that I really like. Um, and, then, and then, of course, the, if you've spent any time reading about blogs and stuff, Hole in the Wall is, is one of those just amazing places to visit. Getting there logistically can be a little bit challenging. Oftentimes, it, you'll be, um, you'll, it'll kind of become more of an out and back, but that hole in the wall, Boulder Pass area, super great areas. So um, as you're starting to think about trips that you'd like to do, consider those different areas as far as like what, what, would, be, what would be my favorite areas. Um, and then you can kind of go from there. So anyways, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more specific in part two, and then depending on, upon feedback, that'll be a part three. So anyways, I'm Jake with Hike734. This is kind of the intro to um, get planning for four and five day, and maybe a little bit longer, backpacking trips.